This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey there, cat lovers. Welcome to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. I'm your host, Dr. Catherine Prim, and I am a small animal veterinarian and crazy cat lover. So today, I have a very unique topic to talk with you guys about. I have Dr. Shadi Rafich to talk about telemedicine in veterinary medicine. So it's sort of exciting, and it's sort of cutting edge, and we're going to pick his brain about it. So we're going to be right back to talk about veterinary telemedicine. Kitty Poo Club reinvented the litter box. No more scrubbing that stinky plastic tray. Or worrying, oh my God, do my guests smell that? No cleaning, no scrubbing, no more stink. You are going to love it. Your cats are going to love it. Go to kittypooclub.com and when you order, save 30% on your first auto ship. Visit kittypooclub.com, use code MEOW30 at checkout, and join the club, the Kitty Poo Club. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio and Dr. Arafich. I am so excited to have you because you are our telemedicine expert. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Thank you so much for having me. So uh, I'm Dr. Shadi Arafich. I'm a board-certified small animal surgeon. I graduated from veterinary school in 2006 from Cornell University. I then completed uh, a one-year general internship, completed two more surgery internships that were each a year, a three-year surgery residency, and then from there began practicing. About, uh, I would say, maybe a decade or so ago, I had the idea of of trying to find a way that doctors can can get on the phone with clients, concerned pet owners, with whether or not they have a true medical emergency with their pet. I was watching the receptionists take just hundreds of calls a day in a 24 seven multi-specialty hospital. And I thought, boy, you know, if a doctor got on the phone with these pet owners, we could actually triage them that way. And so towards the end of 2019, I finally launched a a platform that I'd been working on for over a decade as a board certified surgeon. And that then became Vet Triage, which is a 24 seven video tele-triage platform. And since then I've been working from home managing about 60 staff members across the world who provide 24-7 video tele-triage care. And along came COVID, (laughs) which was probably uh, sort of great for you. Okay, so let's give my listeners a little bit of background. What is tele-triage? The overall arching term for for virtual care in the veterinary field is called telehealth. That's That's the umbrella term. Underneath the the umbrella term, you have several categories. Telemedicine, which is a commonly used word that folks pretty much mean synonymous with telehealth, but telemedicine is one category of tele of telehealth. Telemedicine, teletriage, teleadvice, teleconsulting, telediagnostics, telescripting, etc., are all different telas underneath that umbrella term of telehealth. Teletriage specifically is the use of virtual care with the intent of triaging a pet. Do you have a true medical emergency or not? And then we go from there. On my platform, Vet Triage, we actually hang out between tele-triage and tele-advice because it's kind of impossible to just triage a pet and say yes or no, whether it's a medical emergency or not, without giving some advice as well to help guide the pet owner into an appropriate direction until they can see their family veterinarian or until they can go to the emergency room. And so we ride that line between tele-triage and tele-advice, but there's a whole bunch of different telas underneath that broad category of telehealth in the virtual space. So I don't know if my listeners know all of that, but I do. And I have kind of forayed into the telemedicine arena and I know what you mean. And I um, I don't know that my listeners understand there are actually laws that guide us on which tele we can do, right? Correct. And so I, I'm more than happy to go into more detail regarding regarding the kind of broader landscape of this and sort of the more niche parts of it. So the reason why this distinction is very important, all these different subcategories of telehealth, is because telemedicine, which is the most commonly used term, both 
uh, with medical personnel and non-medical personnel. The reason why that's just a big deal is because under the current state of affairs, the laws and the guidelines with medical boards, telemedicine requires what's called what's known as a VCPR, a veterinary client patient relationship. What that is, a VCPR, what that, in, what that implies is that the veterinarian has met the pet owner and the pet physically in person such that the relationship is now created. The reason why that's important is because obviously you, there are certain things that you can do in real life, in a brick and mortar, in person, with a physical, that, that you can't do virtually. The veterinarian can't touch the pet. We can't run diagnostics, so blood work and x-rays, things like that. We can't do any hands-on treatment with the pet, et cetera. So you have to be able to establish that VCPR first, and then that allows you to provide virtual care thereafter. The, the, the thereafter period of time is dependent on the individual state. Most of the time, it's about 12 months, so one year, where then you have to reestablish a VCPR after that 12-month period of time. That's telemedicine. That's why that's so important. That allows you to see a patient in person, diagnose and prescribe. The teletriage and teleadvice aspect of it omits the VCPR requirement because teletriage and teleadvice is typically done under the impression of an emergency or at least some kind of urgency from the perspective of the pet owner. And so we don't need to create that VCPR, which of course in a virtual space would be impossible. You can't, you can't meet somebody in person when you're doing this on video or over the phone. So that's why that distinction is very important. Telemedicine requires a VCPR, teletriage, teleadvice does not. But the caveat is teletriage and teleadvice also tends to be a bit more generalized. I can't specifically talk in, in immense detail about your pet because I haven't met your pet in person. I can't perform diagnostics. I can't perform treatments. And so it, there's a generality to those two subcategories of telehealth, whereas telemedicine is a bit more specific because you have the benefit of being in person. Perfect explanation. So I am, uh, I'm a writer and I write articles and do, of course, this podcast and people email me all the time and ask me questions about what their pet needs. And, and so I really appreciate that distinction because I feel like there's only so much I can do from this platform, but I feel like I do, I know a lot. And I mean, you do too, right? So yes, that is wonderful. So, so explain this to me, what would one of my listeners need like technology wise to be able to do this with you or, or someone like you? The vast majority of this, of the sessions we see on vet triage are video, They're like 98% of the, to of the clients that access us are going to be on live video within our own platform. We're not using Zoom or other other video technologies. It's our own technology, proprietary technology on a platform. So they're gonna be on video. So they just need a, a device that has video capabilities, smartphone, a computer, a laptop, uh, and a, a tablet. If a client, however, lives in a rural area, they don't have internet, they just don't have a video device, or they simply don't wanna be on video, then they can also call in as well and pay over the phone and then be on with our doctors over the phone as well. And then from there, they can transmit images, pictures, video, whatever, with the client and our doctor via text message or via email if necessary as well to complement the phone session. But most of the folks, as long as they have a device that's got video capabilities and internet, they can access our veterinarians 24 seven, both English and Spanish speaking with for any, any animal type. But those who don't have those abilities or just don't want to be on video, they can just call in as well. That's that, that's fine as also. We partner with facilities, rescues, universities all around the world. And so there are many clients that just don't have access to that kind of technology or internet. So they have to use a landline or or a, a phone that's not a smartphone. Excellent. So do you have to have a relationship with each person's primary veterinarian or is it more generalized? Here's what's really cool about that. I love that question because when we first launched, we didn't have any partners. Nobody knew we existed. We were the first ones doing this 24-7 video teletriage. And so we were relying on folks walking off the street, so to speak, by Google searches or word of mouth to locate us. And that was all of our traffic. Since then, we've had such a great reputation in the virtual space that now over 80% of our traffic comes from partnerships with hospitals, universities, rescues, small clinics, large 24-7 facilities, where during times that they are understaffed, overwhelmed, they've got shortages, they're closing down certain hours, inclement weather, whatever it may be, they can now push all of their cases onto that triage and we'll take care of it. And during times where they are fully staffed, open, not overburdened, they can see whatever cases they want in person. And so 
So it's great because not only does the vast majority of our traffic come seamlessly through partnerships, but it also allows the partners to have basically a pop-off valve. They can choose when they're feeling stressed out or overwhelmed to just send cases over to vet triage and we'll handle it 24 seven. So the easy answer to your question is no, it's not required to have partnerships, but it really makes the entire process seamless and keeps us plenty busy when there are partnerships available. That way, pet owners that have that are experiencing vet triage for the first time, they already have a certain level of comfort because their family veterinarian or the emergency hospital, the university is saying, no, go ahead, go to vet triage. We know them, we're affiliated with them. They'll help you out, they're great. And it gives the client a, a level of comfort because obviously they wanna to talk to somebody who's competent, knowledgeable, sympathetic, empathetic, and that, that'll be our, our veterinary staff. Well, I love that because I'm kind of like you, you know, I hear people asking very important questions kind of as I'm running through, I hear people asking very important questions of my team and I, there's not enough of me to get on the phone with every, you know, I just think that's really good. So of course I have to take a quick break, but I, I want to run through some, I don't know, possible scenarios that might have an application at Vet Triage. So let's take a quick break and come back and talk about patients. Kitty Poo Club reinvented the litter box. No more scrubbing that stinky plastic tray. Or worrying, oh my God, do my guests smell that? Kitty Poo Club has solved the stink. And now the worst part of cat ownership is hassle-free. No cleaning, no scrubbing, no more stink. And the best thing is you don't have to buy some oversized contraption that will break down. Kitty Poo Club litter boxes are manufactured to make your life easier. You have one cat? Easy peasy. A small mountain lion? No problem. You are going to love it. Your cats are going to love it. Believe me, there are good reasons why we sold over 3 million boxes. Go to kittypooclub.com, read the amazing reviews, and when you order, save 30% on your first auto ship. Visit kittypooclub.com. Use code MEOW30 at checkout and join the club, the Kitty Poo Club. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. So Dr. Arefa and I are talking a little bit about telemedicine, teletriage, and all the telas. And I wanted to take a moment to just talk about maybe some of the common things that my cat-loving listeners might see in their cat and have questions about. So do you have a, a feeling for maybe what one of the more common calls you guys might get? Would be. Absolutely. In fact, we are currently compiling data now to uh, try and publish medical literature that will actually show this exact distribution. So I thank you for asking for, for this. So the number one most common body system, let's say, symptoms that we see on vet triage is across the board, regardless of whether you're talking about Cornell University's data, University of Minnesota, SPCA's, doesn't matter, is gastrointestinal distress, vomiting, diarrhea, not eating, lethargy bloated stomach, things like that. That's number one by far is gastrointestinal. And that might resonate with you because anybody who's practiced clinically in either emergency or especially in general practice, they'll say, yeah, gastrointestinal disease is the number one reason why we see people in general. It's always the vomiting, the diarrhea, the not eating. And so that's number one. The second most common aspect that we see, does there is some variability here, but musculoskeletal injuries, limping, wounds, you want to include porcupine quills into that category, uh, some kind of weird lump or bum, an ulceration on the pet's skin, things like that are, are probably second. And it's a very close tie to number three, which is urinary. So bloody urine or frequency of urination, inappropriate urination, discolored urine, et cetera. So those are our top three. After those two, skin issues in general, like allergic reactions or a flare up of allergies, and then finally behavior problems. Uh, pets that are getting freaked out by a thunderstorm or by the, the upcoming fireworks for 4th of July or any other holiday, you know. And so those are the, the top five that we typically will see. There is some fluctuation with the last like three to five, depending on the data set. But in general, those are the top five things we see. Gastrointestinal is by far number one across the board. Well, I think gastrointestinal produces an urgency in the human 
especially if it's diarrhea. So yes, I was going to say, what about skin? What about skin? So when you guys get just a hypothetical call about something that's complicated, like a behavior case where they really need a consultation with their veterinarian, how do you handle that? That's what's beautiful about this platform. So the website describes exactly what the purpose of the platform is. We're looking to figure out whether you have a true medical emergency or not. It's not really intended to discuss long-term modifications to lifestyle or therapies that are really more appropriate for visiting your general practitioner. But the majority of so the reason why that's important is because the majority of clients that reach out to us, they're usually seeing some sort of oddity, some sort of flare up that's really worrying them. And it may be something that's chronic, like a behavior issue, but the pet owner is seeing something that seems to be very acute. All of a sudden, uh oh, this is new. My dog is shivering when they're asleep. What I've never noticed this before. Is this a is this some weird, crazy neurologic problem? Should I freak out? What's going on? And so they'll usually come to us with that. If the veterinarian on the on the platform on vet triage determines a behavior issue to not be a medical emergency that pet owners put at ease. And then we can tell the client, you know what, it sounds like what you're dealing with is a potentially a, a chronic issue. I do want you to see your veterinarian in the next two weeks, 30 days, three months, whatever it may be, to talk in more depth about all the different reasons why your feline might be exhibiting these odd behaviors. And the clients understand that. They want to see their family veterinarian anyway. That's the person they have a relationship with. So it makes sense. But at least we can ease their mind and say, it's not an emergency for right now. But I think a more in-depth behavior consult might be indicated. Now, if the pet owner does say, well, my family practitioner has dealt with this before and we're not really seeing the results we were hoping for, then we might say, well, you know, there actually are board certified veterinary behaviorists that you can consult with too. And they'll say, really? I didn't know they had specialists. Yeah. In fact, if you do an internet search in your area, it might be a bit of a drive and a bit of a wait to get the appointment, but you should definitely seek out a behaviorist then who specialized in this. And they'll say, oh my goodness, wow, thank you. I had no idea. I'll do that and, and go from there. So that's how we alleviate those concerns. Without getting too much into the weeds of the problem, that really is a chronic issue and not an emergency. We can help the pet owner kind of guide them and how to tackle this in the future. Thank you. That's a great answer. So can I delve into a little bit of maybe what you can't do? Like maybe someone calls and says, I just saw fleas on my cat. I want something for flea. Can you prescribe something for my cat's fleas? Do you ever hear anything like that? I bet you do. We definitely do. But you know what? It wouldn't be as common as you'd think. Most people will, once they join the video call, the doctor, the first words out of their mouth from the pet owner's mouth is, I just need to know if this is an emergency or not. That's literally, they are telling us what our job is. And so pet owners understand that. They're not coming on here to say, yeah, I just want some flea and tick prevention. Can you hook me up with that? We don't see a lot of that at all. And I think it's because the community is well-educated through our partners and because of our website and our social media and all that stuff. So we don't see, we don't see a lot of that. Having said that, there are lots of creative ways that we can give advice to folks to sort of give palliative care. So for example, in the flea situation, Nothing wrong with recommending a bath for that pet. Nothing wrong with recommending how to keep the household clean and let them know, hey, fleas are going to live where your pet spends the most time. So it's time to take that bed, that orthopedic bed for your dog, get rid of it or clean it out really well. Or maybe you have to treat the whole house with a professional with a professional exterminator to take care of all those bugs and then reestablish your, your household again. So we'll give plenty of advice like that that doesn't cross any boundaries. It, there's not, it's not invasive. They're not actual therapies like medications, certainly no procedures like surgeries or anything crazy like that. We can give lots of advice to bandage the situation, actually help the pet and the pet owner out. And of course, give them peace of mind with no sign of emergency. So we can get pretty creative, even if a pet owner thinks that they need prescriptions right now, when in fact they really don't, we can do other things to make the pet feel better and alleviate the pet owner's concern. I love that. So I think it's important to mention that this is a paid service though, right? Correct. Yeah. The only way that I can manage a technology platform like this with all of its intricacies, all of its updates, all the marketing involved and pay the staff that they are not just enjoying a, a good professional quality of life, but also they're incentivized to be here. They need to make money. We have to charge for the services. It's a $50 fee, 50 in US dollars. And they spend as much time with the doctor as they need. 
Plus, let's say, for example, their veterinarian won't be open. It's the holiday weekend. It won't be open until Monday or Tuesday. That's fine. They can actually be re-triaged with our doctors anytime after their call with the vet for free, no additional charge. That way, if Fluffy's condition changes after the video call with our vet, we can re-triage and say, oh, oh, did that non-emergency now become an emergency? Or does that pet owner just have more questions? And so, so it is a paid service, $50 as much time as you'd like with the doctor, regardless of species or where you live, we can uh, take care of, of the pet owner right there in real time. I love that. So, okay, well, let's tell my listeners where they might be able to find you. So vettriage.com, V-E-T-T-R-I-A-G-E.com. That's our website. If you're a, a Spanish-speaking uh, pet owner, um, then it's vettriage.com slash ESP for Espanol. Also, we've got our Facebook page, LinkedIn, um, we're on TikTok, we've got Instagram, a YouTube channel, all those social media platforms allow for education, inspiring stories, testimonials, things like that. So you can learn about more about the company, but vettriage.com 24-7, English and Spanish speaking. And we are global, by the way. So whether you live in Australia, Italy, Canada, the US, you can access our veterinarians 24-7. So all of my listeners can talk to you and so can my clients. So this is awesome. I really appreciate your time. I learned a lot today and I suspect my listeners did as well. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you so much for having me on. I'd love to come back anytime you need me. I will definitely have you back. So thank you to my amazing producer, Mark Winter, that I thank every time because he keeps the show wonderful, meowvulous. And to all of my cat-loving listeners, go out and have a perfect day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.